welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is your favorite daybreak, Africa. Now, today we'll be talking on an interesting topic. It has to do with livestock and particularly poultry farming in Nigeria. Once upon a time, we believe um, a man will have to wake up in the morning and then take a bath and probably put on a tie, <laughs> put on a suit and go to work. And if that concerns poultry or chicken, for it's more like uh, things for the women and things for just the home, per se. And today, with us to discuss this particular topic, where we will talk about poultry, particularly poultry. poultry. <laughs> Uh, today with us to discuss this topic is uh, a farmer, a poultry farmer in the house by name Festus Adi Bada. We're glad to have you. Thank you very nice much. Nice to have you on the show. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now farming, agriculture, we know that this is one part of the Nigerian economy which is dominated by most population, most of the populace. It's just recently that the white collar jobs, you know, came to take over. But one aspect of farming is that of livestock. And today particularly we are concentrating on poultry, which involves, you know, turkey, geese, chicken and all of that. Please briefly tell us what is poultry farming about? Poultry farming, thank you very much. Poultry farming is the art of taking care of birds, live birds. As we have said, it includes turkey and few other birds, birds and so on. Hmm. And uh, it is one aspect of a very good source of economy hmm. in the country that probably is not properly looked at probably by the government okay so it's an aspect of it is an area that feed most of the people you talk of poultry farming you talk of production of eggs hmm. production of meat and that chicken from chicken and so on and at times you have some that even will, when you watch it walking up and down in your home you, you take joy in it like uh you say cheese or what do you call it geese geese okay. and uh this peacock okay okay you, when you see them in your farm you you feel happy because you know peacock <laughs> apart from the, the beautiful and it displays a lot that you see, and then you thank God for the work of nature. As Nigerians, we particularly believe in profit. If it doesn't give us money, nobody wants to be involved. Exactly. So how profitable is this poetry? Thank you very much. Well, by the time I started, I, I was not really thinking about the profit because by the time I started, I was even then a civil servant. Okay. And I, sa I started when I would buy the old chicks for 50 kobo. I'm not saying 5 naira, 50 hmm. kobo. And when you not see it for about 6 7 months, by the end of the year, you sell it for 50 naira. That was uh, that was when I started. This over 30 years ago. Wow. And just at the back of my house. Uh, and I did that gradually, gradually. Later I started having interest. In fact, I was particularly interested when I bought 30 beds, I thought I would sell them by December. I lost one, and along the, time, along the line, I discovered that after a very long time, these beds were not growing. So you started the poultry farming with 30 beds? 30 beds. beds. Okay. And eventually, I said one, one was dead. And with the 30, I went to the person I bought it from. These beds are not growing. What is happening? He said, he came and said, ah... He said he sold pullet for me hmm. and these are these pullets are the best who will raise that to be bringing eggs so i just kept the third the 29 and after about three months he started laying and within one month i was not using my money to buy feed hmm. from the eggs i would get at least a crate every other day every other day and from that i was able to raise it it was that that forced me to go in to buy this little cage, bought 100 beds, and from then I went to Ogere, where we call animal care. That was where I went to buy standard cages. Okay. Yes, and since then, I've been raising up to 2,000 beds because 
this was just beside my house. Okay. I I decided not to go and get another site. Because for whatever it is, age is actually telling on me. <laughs> <laughs> like you said earlier, you said um, this is one aspect, poetry is one aspect that fits the nation and really doesn't get much attention like it's supposed to. Let's take, for instance, um, egg that we get from the hen, chicken. This is um, one vital, should I say, <laughs> one vital product that yes. we get from the hen, which we could use in um, producing bread and other things. We could even boil, we could eat. It's a good source of protein by way of meat, the mm. chicken, and all of that. The setup is what we want to look at now because many people are finding alternative means because the economy and all of that, you need more than one source of income. And considering your experience planning three decades and starting as a civil servant, we want to know how you managed to put this up, what the amount you used as a then. We know it won't really correlate with the present situation of things, but how is the startup like? What do I need to have to start a poultry farm? Yes, to start up a poultry farm, you need a, a, a reasonable space. Then definitely you need capital. Hmm. If you are talking of buying cage, these uh, battery cages, you need some money. But you can rear it on the bare floor. The only thing is here, we are not able to gain much from reading it on the floor. Okay. Because when you do that, the beds are so sensitive. And you know our people, they, will, they, will, they may not give enough feed to these beds. Okay. If they are hungry and they peck one of the eggs and drink it, hmm. when again they lay, they want to, because it's very sweet. It's nourishing to, even to the beds. Hmm. So, but if you are able to put it in the cage, it requires a lot of money to get a good cage. When I started, it is this cage that we used to clean the water every morning, pour water from time to time. Thereby, there will be a poultry attendant that will be attending to the beds. But the cage I bought now is a matter of just giving them feed. The water, the drink is automatic. If we can, I can give them food feed we go to the church we come back to p.m 3 p.m they are okay the water does not stop mm. it's only expensive and as i have said i started by taking loan from a cooperative society mm. and like starting the business yes you took a loan to start the yes, business. yes yes okay that's a big risk because we hear that you shouldn't take loan to start a business you should take loan to expand an existing business so how was the experience for you as i said before i took the loan i had started raising the best gradually okay. so by the time i discovered that i can improve on this because one thing about votary is neatness for the beds. Hmm. You must take proper care, just as if you are taking care of a human being. So I took loan, I bought cages, I got a very spacious place. Because when I was buying my land where I built my house, I bought more than enough. Okay. So I was able to use that. So I installed the cages and since then, I've been enjoying it. I sunk a well because by then I couldn't afford to sink a borehole. I sunk a well and from the well, it is the water from the well that feeds the beds. I did not connect that well to the water we use at home. Okay. Just only to the For poultry. The birds. And though it is expensive, but still, we still try to keep up operating it. Uh, it's been a good uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Once we are able to take care of the beds properly, in fact, you may not buy, you may not have to buy a lot of drugs. Mm -hmm. You see some poultry farmers, they will tell you, I buy this drug, it is green today, it is this tomorrow. If we are able to take proper care, just ask human beings, if we eat well, we live in a hygienic environment, it is not very common for Ross to fall sick. Okay. I want to believe it requires high uh, technical knowledge. It's not something anybody could just engage into. 
because I, I notice you actually in more emphasis on the sensitivity of the birds and then being probably taken care of. Does it require a certain level of technical knowledge? It requires because you see everything you work with you must take proper care of it. What happens in most cases is that people who take care of themselves not even taking care of what they work with. Some people have air conditioners in their office although it is stopped working. They will mm. know it needs to be serviced. I mean, some to use vehicles until they refuse to move. And that is the problem some people are facing. But in case, in, in, in the case of beds, poultry, that is life. The knowledge there is that you must take proper care. In fact, not anybody can enter into the penthouse. Mm. And not anybody. Before you can, if, if we employ you fresh, are fresh, maybe you stay about one week just watching the birds from outside. You must take proper care of yourself, make sure you are neat, the dress you will wear, and when you are entering the penthouse, you don't wear shoe. You it's either a silk pass, and before you enter, there will be water at the entrance with any of this uh, disinfectant. Okay. You dip your leg into it before you enter into the penthouse. Mm, that's a lot of caution <laughs> for the yes, birds. Yes, yes. Talking about the feeding because mm. <laughs> food is very important. The same for livestock, I guess. They need feed. So how often do you feed these birds? What is the capacity? How many bags of feed do they consume? Do you make it yourself? Do you buy it? And also water. How many liters of water can they consume maybe in a day and all of that? Just in case there are people that are trying to start this business. Thank you very much. For birds, when they are at the adult stage, layers will, t 200 layer beds will take a bag of mash in a day. Wow. 200 layers beds will take a bag of mash in a day. Mm -hmm can get estimate for the price of a bag a bag varies right now it starts from about seven thousand you have six thousand eight seven thousand eight thousand yes and that is just 200 beds mm -hmm. so you have two thousand they are eating 10 bags of mash in a day if you bag a bag of mash for seven thousand then you are giving them seventy thousand mash in a day that is the feed Mm -hmm. And it varies with the producers. There okay. are so many types of marsh, m many types. So it depends on the one you use in your farm. Then some people produce their own. They will buy the materials, concentrates, uh, maize and so on, and then they will mix and give to the birds. That is relatively cheaper. Okay. But in doing that, one has to be very careful. During the course of mixing, that you do not mix something that is a bit poisonous with a marsh. If you do that, one can lose 50, 100, 200 beds in a day. Hmm. Yes. And but if you buy the finished one, the finished products, the bags, it varies 7,000, 7,000, 8,000. It depends on the type of marsh. But as I said, 200 beds will eat a bag of marsh in one day. And about the type of feeds like the starter and all of that? No, when you get to layers, they eat just lay more marsh, layers marsh. When you talk of starter, that is where you buy them in one a day old. Okay. Then you try to nurse them, it gets to a stage they eat, they take finisher. After that, you continue to give them grower. Then in that wise, they, they don't water. eat much bag. They don't eat much feed. Hmm. I mean, because the birds are small, they take little. You can buy a bag for 200 birds. It can last about three, four, five days, even 10 days. Okay. <laughs> for water, we generally, we do not gauge the, uh, uh, the water we give to birds. Okay. For example, if you are raising broiler for feed, broiler will continue to eat any time. 
<laughs> as far as there is light. They eat even midnight. If there is light, they will be eating. Though the big, they get bigger, the more they eat. But for water, just the, the cage I said I'm using, water is there 24 hours. Okay. But for those who give them water, they will wait for the water because something about beds, for those give, who give water, probably in open water trough, the water trough must be cleaned every day. They mm. will not eat, drink the water of yesterday. If you leave it there, they won't drink it. If they drink it, eventually they will die. Mm. So you make sure you clean every day. And when you discover the water is going down, you add more water. That is for the uh, the one that is still the manual one. But for this one that is a bit automatic, water flows there 24 hours. Mm. And even with the water flowing 24 hours, you can have about four or five beds in a cage. They, they drink from a nozzle. When they put their pick, the nozzle will open and be pouring water into their mouth. As soon as they remove their, remove their pick, the, the water will stop. Okay. So because of that, when this one is okay, another one will drink, another one will drink, another one. And they drink water more during the dry season. We know you have <laughs> a lot to say, but that will be after the break. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back. And yes, we are still discussing livestock farming, particularly poultry. We were discussing their feeding and their drinking capacity of the birds. So as you were saying, um, Festus, you can go on. Particularly, okay. I have a question. But you know, we are Nigerians. Yes. We like to say improvised things. Yes. Now, I was just wondering, what happens if we tend to adulterate their feet? more like maybe mix uh what's it called the starter or the finisher with some chaff and make it look just <laughs> enough so they could use those, less yes, for e more exactly because saying uh, you said uh if it back costs seven thousand or more hmm. yes and all that. so we are nigerians we like to improvise so what happens if they tend to do that you yes some people still do it i'm sorry for example in the Oyo state area and some are doing it around here where they will add other things some will grind uh, maize, though maize is part of this. Yes. Some will put what they call okababa, I may not know it in English. <laughs> Some may put uh, uh, the shaft of beans. Yeah. Hmm. They grind everything, they add together. The only difference is in the production of the eggs. But well, customers don't look at that. Okay. But still, if you buy egg, some eggs will be in your house for two weeks, one month, they will not get spoiled. Hmm. So after one week, you cannot eat it again. Hmm. That is the outcome of the mixture, the local mixture here and there. But by the time someone sells a crate of egg for 1,008 and someone sells it, selling so-and-so, 1,002 or 1,005, you be able to know the difference. Exactly. We we they do that. We improvise, but it is best done for the best that we will raise and sell, like like the uh, broiler, the cockerel, okay. the noiler. Not for the layers. Not for layers. Okay. But they still use it for layers. Just like, um, okay, we humans, um, no matter how we try to, you know, be safe, be clean, you know, practice good personal hygiene and all of that, mm. eat well, eat right, we'll still fall sick, you know, once in a while. So yes. how is it like with birds? With Do they fall sick? If they do, how do you detect early to prevent that of, you know, the poultry? Thank you very much. Products. They fall sick, just like human beings. They fall sick. At a, what part of their sickness is, is cough. And particularly only the raining period, they have cough. And by the time they have cough, you can only know mainly at night when everywhere is silent. Okay. You'll be hearing the <gasps> <gasps> while breathing, they have cough. That is treatable fast. They have something they call coccidiosis, where they are not okay, just be like this. Yeah. <laughs> so far, so good. We've been told no solution to that. If you have any bed that is like that, 
the best you can do, you kill it and eat it. <laughs> and at times it is like that, you still be laying. Okay. Still be laying. Then at times they have this uh, very common, they are, their feces will be green. That is where you identify it, green feces. And that is why where they put their feces, you still watch it virtually every day. You see one or two or three that have that green something, you remove the beds immediately, you treat those three specially, and you administer the same medication to all the beds that have not started. Then you'll be able to enjoy them. Now after you see the score that the three are well, after, yeah, you can return them to the babies. Well, not to liken um, animals to humans and all of that, but with humans, I think when a baby is born with time, maybe at one month, three months, you take them for immunization, they don't really have to fall sick before you do that. So are there drugs you give to these birds and all of that? Yeah, like I have heard of um, yes. Gombora and the rest. Gomboro. Are there drugs you have to give to them? Yes, And please. at what, you know, how many months i don't know if that's at what age yeah by the time you buy these beds you buy it from a standard uh, producers company they will tell they give you the charts that the first day give them this uh, five days give them this one week they they, they, they talk in days okay. 14 days give them this that's how we use just like children you administer these drugs right, through liquid and at times through injection. And this starts from day one. Okay. In fact, before they are released from the hatchery, they are given an injection, all the small, small beds. And for the experts who buy, when they get to the hatchery, they know those ones that are healthy and those ones that they should not buy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Coming to that, uh, is there anything as a bad breed? Because I, I don't know if it's actually a misconception, but I'm glad you actually made that statement. There is a situation where people actually, a friend of mine actually bought uh, about 150 birds, and in a week, all of them died. Mm -hmm. And then he just stacked it to, uh, the, this one is a bad breed. I was thinking, I mean, <laughs> it's a bear, which one, what do you mean by bad breed? Mm -hmm. And th is there anything as that, or is it just more like a mis misconception? Ah, to me, it is a misconception. It is true where you, you can get up to 100 beds and about two or three may be bad. Even from the one, they will tell you this is bad, this is bad. And uh, when they ask from them from the hatchery, how do you discover the bad ones? They said the bad ones will have something like little tail. Mm. Will have it when they bring them out to be sold. So those ones, the probability of their living is 50-50. Hmm. So they won't buy. But if you get to the hatcheries, you see some women around the hatchery, they'll be telling these beds. The one you buy the hatchery for maybe about 500, 800 naira, they can say they sell for you for 200. They are outside there. Okay. If you buy from there, you are likely to have this headache. But when you have it, you cannot refer the fault to the hatchery mm -hmm. or the company it is those who bought from outside the company when you talked about the sicknesses and these birds mm -hmm. face you mm -hmm. talked about cough which is mostly in the cold you know season mm -hmm. cold atmosphere. at times you have it during the dry season too. oh okay during the dry season so mm -hmm. now let's look at the setup of the bird house you said there will be a cage what is necessary to be inside the cage apart from their food and water trough and all of that? Do, does there have to be lights like 24 7, maybe a bulb or something? Some form of heat, they say. Thank you very much. You must consider ventilation in setting up any poultry. In fact, you must consider this, the sun. When the sun will set, mm. when the sun will come up in the morning and when it sets in the evening. So that the direction of the poultry will not be to that sun. Okay. The sun rays affect the The sun rays the affects okay. them. Then the place must not be stuffy at all. In fact, if one is able to get a fast land, a vast land, it is better you build poultry there. In the past, when they build poultry, they always have wall 
around it. But now not wall, it is net. You just discover that they put net even from the top of that till very to close the to the floor. Okay. So that there will be enough ventilation for the beds. Hmm. Because as we breathe, they breathe too. So the, 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 the cage, the penthouse must be spacious and there must be light. Generally, poultry don't use uh, electricity okay. because the moment there is light, they will want to, be, to eat. So if there is light, they will not stop eating. But as soon as the light goes off, they will sleep. If you get there to uh, put on the light, they will start eating immediately. Mm. So uh, the light that is best for poultry is natural. The natural light, not, not sun the electricity, rain. not. Okay. Mm -mm. But you need that at times, maybe it is about to rain, you can see very dark environment, you can put it on light if you like. Mm -hmm. And at times, when you have just taken beds, particularly the point of lay, that is what most of us buy, because okay. it's not easy, it is not easy raising bed from day one, so buy point of lay. The point of lay will be getting set to lay. At times, within two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, they start laying. In that wise, when you bring them, because they always travel, you always bring them from far places. When you get there, they will be tired. And sure. you need to give them something we will take when we are tired, like glucose. Okay. Add it to their water. Maybe first two, three days, they are back. And for them to get back their strength, you may be advised that instead of closing the poultry when it is dark, maybe 7, they can say give them light till about 9 p.m. so that they will have time to eat more. So that's drawing yeah. this from what you said earlier mm -hmm. about fixing the nets close to the ground level. How do you protect these birds from reptiles? Because snakes and all that, you know, insects, reptiles could attack, and I'm sure this is harmful for the birds. Thank you very much. Number one, snakes are the enemies of birds, they eat eggs and they kill these birds. When, when they sting the birds, the birds will die. Mm. In fact, they are, I don't think there is anything, because before you discover it, you discover there is nothing we can do. And at times it is easy, very easy to you to identify any bird that has been sung, stung by a snake. Okay. Where you hold the feather, it removes easily. Mm. It removes easily. So all we do is, in preparing the poultry, you have made take care of all those things that would drive away snakes. In my poultry, for instance, I have killed about two, three, four, five snakes there. Mm -hmm. But for the past two, three, four years, I've not been seeing snakes there at all. And these snakes are very big. There are smaller ones, but there are big ones. So it is the arrangement of the poultry that will have made that will not allow snake to enter the place. You get good net. Snakes will not enter through the net. Snakes will not like to be wounded. They don't want anything to scratch their body. Okay. If anything scratches their body, they will kill themselves. They will continue to eat that side. Mm. That is snake. So this net, if it's sharp and will wound them, they won't enter. And generally me, I fleet the surroundings of my poultry with insecticide, these powerful ones. Mm, they are like not harmful to the birds. They are not harmful to the birds, but not close to the birds. Okay. Now, we, we are talking about poultry, but I know we've dwelt so much on hen. Um, we're leaving turkey, geese, and all that out of the picture. But do you have any experience in this field? Can you tell us like about turkey, how to care for them? Is it the same uh, method, the same feed? Is the same feed. Hmm. More or less, <clears throat> is the same method. Okay. But turkey is stronger than these uh, birds. Though there are these uh, imported turkeys, 
just like these uh, beds. Those ones too require some care, just like any other one. Make sure wherever they are is neat. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you, you so talking. much, sir. We could go on and on and on about this, but due to our time, this is where we have to stop. It was nice to have you on the show. Now we'll be handing over to our legal studio. We'll have something wonderful in store for us as usual. Until then, I am Guala Emanuela. And I am Ezekiel Oga. Bye. <laughs>